Well, welcome to New York, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, tell me how you're enjoying the big state. It's a lot different than Denver, I would Definitely say. a lot different than Denver. The weather, not so much. I mean, it's kind of still cold, but other than that, I'm loving the energy here. I love the people. Uh, New York just brings a different side out of you, so I'm loving it. Different side how? Like I said, energetic. I'm more so chill, nonchalant, but you kind of got to, how can I say it, feel more outgoing and you kind of, everything's so fast paced, so you just got to have a lot more energy into everything that you do. You can't be just slow and mellow. But do you like kind of adapting to that here? Yeah, I'm, I can say me and New York people kind of have the same type of mentality, uh, even though I'm chill, but as far as like, Everybody here is kind of aggressive, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of the same way, but in a more like chill mentality way. Yeah. I would say, though, that kind of nonchalant chillness isn't really how you are when you play. No. Nah, it uh, doesn't come out in, in that sense. Not necessarily, but at the same time, uh, kind of the pace I play with. Uh, I mean, sometimes I'm smooth with the ball and stuff like that. So it's you got its pros and cons with when I'm aggressive and when I'm kind of Still in that smooth kind of mentality too. Smooth so. with the ball, okay. Yeah, so that's how I look at it a little bit. What are some of the biggest differences between living in a place like Denver and coming here? Uh, like I said, faster pace. It's like night and day. Um, difference, uh, you know, everything here is on top of each other. Bigger city type feel. A uh, lot more people. Um, you see a lot more people just walking around. So. Uh, if you've been to Denver, you can come here and you would definitely be like, because Denver's so chill too. Mm -hmm. You know, people go there for skiing and stuff like that. So it's, it's definitely a difference. But it's weird because I think in some ways people kind of sleep on Denver. Yeah. Like it's a nice in, 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 little in what city. Way though? Like there's some good food places there. Yeah. It's a chill yeah. little area. I mean, like, but what, it's not like Oklahoma City. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> but a lot of people are moving into, it's like one of the fastest growing yeah. cities right now. So. Uh, like like you said, it got its, its pros too. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's cool to you know just relax and chill out. Like you ain't got to be fast paced all the time. So, yeah. uh, but at the same time, it's like if you're gonna do something, there's not too much to do out there. Here in New York, there's a lot more to do. You know, a lot more. You can get into fashion and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff going on over here. Yeah, because I said you're you're just very cool today. Yeah, I'm just I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm chilling. I was like, okay, not, we got we got the nice little hoodie, just, mix it up, the athleisure yeah, thing. Yeah, sweats and the hoodie. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. But this to me is like a very Cali look. Um, maybe it's just because the shoes. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, you know, I see my brothers. They they're into fashion too. Uh, Steph, the oldest one, he, he's pretty into fashion. So. Uh, I'm kind of gravitating towards that a lot more, uh, but like I said, I still do it in a chill way. Mm -hmm. uh, if I do it, it ain't got to be jeans all the time. So right. I like doing it with sweats as well. Who dresses better? Who's the best dressed brother? Now, by the way, one brother is in here, so this yes, is a very yes. <laughs> um, he he knows more. So okay. I'll say, as of right now, he is the leading candidate. But I'm I'm making my way. Okay, you're um, getting there. Yeah. It's, and it's I'm in the, I'm in the right city, so I got an advantage. You too. are. So yeah. I mean, he's in L.A., but New York's the fashion, you know. Did you get to go? Well, I guess you weren't here when Fashion Week was really going. That's when I got traded. Yeah. But I mean, we we kind of like left that that week, so I really didn't get to experience too much. Mm -hmm. So what's it like? Okay, you're just in Denver, chilling in the chill city. Yeah. Time to go to New York. What yeah. is the first thing that went through your mind when you found out you were about to be in it? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna tell you the truth. It was kind of more like, I felt like I was supposed to be here from the beginning because uh, coming out, I got drafted in 2015. Uh, New York, I think, had the fourth pick. They made the right pick. You know, they, they went with Chris Tapps, uh, they got Porzingis. But uh, a lot of people thought that I was gonna come here. I thought I was gonna come here. But then now that, you know, it happened, it happened in just three years. So, what, well, two and a half. But mm -hmm. the fact that I'm here now is just like, I felt like it was meant to be. Uh, Denver was more so, you know, learning experience and stuff like that. So, and still, you know, I'm still young, still learning. But uh, when that happened, I, I never received, I feel like I received more congrats texts that day <laughs> than I did when I got drafted. Yeah. Or when I had a big game or something like that. So... It felt good, you know, and I saw a lot of people showed a lot of support. 
Um, you know, the fans here, they, they really, you know, they want it so bad and I want it so bad. So it's a, it's a good thing. So, I mean, what was it like? You said you knew you wanted to be in New York, but mm -hmm. it just isn't what happened. Like, mm -hmm. what is that like, you know, just kind of your mindset when you really want to go somewhere and that's not where you end up? And you're yeah. not thinking, hey, years down the line, I'll end up there. Yeah. It's, it, was it a disappointment for you? No, I, I look at everything kind of in a spiritual way. So I was just like, you know, it's God's plan. Uh, he wanted me there. So after I went there, I wasn't over. I mean, so many people trying to be in the NBA. So you can't, you got to count your blessings at the same time. You can't be ungrateful. That's kind of how I was looking at it. I was still grateful. I got to go start right away, play a lot of minutes right away. So, um, you know, like I said, Denver was, I've never been to Denver when I went though. The only difference was like cities that had the first couple picks. I've been to every city but Denver. So it was kind of a different transition in that aspect. Up until what moment did you say, okay, I'm not going to New York? Like, did you not realize it until they said Christoph's name? Um, yeah. I, that's really? what I, th I think nobody, because we had an idea going in, like on draft day, uh, it was like between two and four, like that I was projected from like two, four. But like after that, after Chris Taps went, that's when it really hit me like, I'm not going to New York. And now it's like, let's see where I end up. Mm -hmm. you know? What was it like, I guess, kind of going through that process, dealing with New York, dealing with the other teams? Because at that point, you were dealing with Phil Jackson still. Yeah. 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 Um, exactly. I didn't know what was going to happen. So uh, obviously you there with your agents, your family and stuff like that. So they let you know kind of what's going on. Um, and they kind of told me, like, they're going to take Chris Stapps. And I mean, when that happened, I was just like, all right, let me just see what other teams. I think Sacramento or Orlando and Sacramento had the fifth and six. I went seven to Denver, but yeah. Uh, no disrespect to like Sacramento, but I was just like, I've never even experienced Sacramento either. So it was like six and seven. I didn't know where I was going to end up. Yeah. So it's so crazy because even when you're watching the draft, you're seeing yeah. like all these people on the phone. I've seen yeah. people talk. I can't imagine like what is going through your yeah. mind when it's, you're figuring out your fate. Essentially. Right. It's kind of you just wait for your name to be called. Uh, the fact that you're in the room itself, you kind of already is like, you know you're gonna get drafted. I mean, most people, they kind of have an idea that they're gonna get, and you got, a, you got an idea like where you're gonna go. Uh, but when I dropped, I was like, man, hopefully I'm still in the top 10 and stuff like that. So I didn't work out for Denver, Never, like I said, never been to Denver and nothing. But Tim Conley, you know, who I got major respect for, who's the GM over there, he took a shot on me, so. It was pretty cool. And now you said that for you, Denver was a learning experience. What mm -hmm. do you feel like you learned? Um, I feel like when I first got in the league, well, actually my whole life, I've always been, you know, pretty good at what I did. So it was kind of, I worked, but at the same time it was given to me too. Like certain things were like, you know, since you're so good already, here you go, like, there you go. And coming into the NBA, you playing against the great players. You got Steph, LeBron, KD, you know, stuff like that. So they had the same kind of experience of like everything was handed to them, but they worked for it. But it was just everybody got different routes. Um, you know, I went from starting to, you know, wasn't playing as much and stuff like that. So I really looked at it as a different outlook and it just made me grow so much as an individual. So. At that point, I was like, man, you can't ever take nothing for granted. So it made me just a better person. Yeah, and I feel like even, you know, coming to New York, the whole thing with everyone was, okay, this guy has so much potential. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, he's going to get to New York, yeah. and we're all going to see it. Right. And he's going to reach it. Right. Is that the feeling that you have with it, too? Like, this is almost a year for you to just keep getting closer to that ultimate, you know, Emmanuel? Right. Um, like I said, I'm taking it one day at a time, but... Like they said, you know, I've actually, I can see the potential in myself now more so of just hearing it. So sometimes I'm like, okay, you can do this. Like you can do it. Just trying to make it consistent now. So I'm mm -hmm. uh, still a young player, still figuring out some stuff, but you know, and seeing it from other people that they have so much faith in you and stuff like that, you just don't want to let them down. Mm -hmm. So you want to go out there and just play as hard as you can every night and just be a good, you know, citizen and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Off, off the court as well. Right. A lot of people don't understand off the court is a major fact to what translates to the court. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just want to do great in all aspects. Yeah, in what ways? Talk about kind of that off the court I aspect. mean, just helping. I'm a big person, you know, giving opportunity to, because I didn't, 
you know, me and my brothers growing up, we grew up pretty tough. My mom, you know, she raised us by herself. Three boys, you know, our father passed when we was young, well, all of us was young. So just seeing individuals that, you know, are struggling, especially in a single parent home, like I can kind of relate to that. So just talking to them or trying to help them as much as I can, giving back any way I can. So I just love doing that. Yeah, and I, th I always think it's so amazing. It's something I talk about on the podcast a lot is just like representation. Like mm -hmm. sometimes if there is a kid that is in the same situation that you mm -hmm. were when you were younger, just seeing someone yeah. like you yeah. and saying, okay, well, this is where they are now. And right. that just means so much and it makes you feel like you can reach that too, even yeah. when sometimes it doesn't feel like you will. No, for sure. And even when I was younger, there was people that used to come talk to us and sometimes you're like, man, that'll probably never be me. Or sometimes you're like, I hope I get there, but you never know. So um, you just gotta be really paying attention to other people. And one thing I'm big on, I always hang around like majority of the time older people because they can basically give you wisdom and basically <laughs> tell you, you know. All the old heads. Yeah, kind of <laughs> what to do, what not to do. So that's real helpful too. So I think that's kind of why I'm not, I'm so chill at the same time because I'm not kind of into what a lot of people my age probably are into. Okay, what are you into? I'm, I'm an old head, basically. I mean, like, I, yeah, are you I'm, sitting like reading I'm, newspapers, no, playing not like cards? That, but or what I'm more, <laughs> I'm more like, I don't have to be around a lot of people to have fun or yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not clubbing. That's really not my thing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, I enjoy company and stuff. Like, I'm not saying I'm not approachable, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I just feel like certain things I don't need to do to have fun. Yeah. So just basically try to do the right thing at the same time. And in my, it's funny because in Denver, I really didn't have too much eyes on me like that. I had eyes on me. You always have eyes on me, but here it's just a whole bigger oh, type yeah. of, you know, everybody's looking at what you're doing and stuff like that. So like everything you do yeah, will be nah, for sure. scrutinized. For sure. Yeah. So I hope they have warned you about nah, that. Everybody's <laughs> told me that. So um, at the same time, I don't look at it as a bad thing either. I look at it as if you're doing the right thing, then good things going to be, you know, said or I'm just going to be myself, really. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm not here to try to be somebody I'm not, basically. Yeah. I do kind of get the sense going off what you're saying. It's more that, like, your head is just in a different space yeah. than probably people right. it, your age. I mean, I would have been a senior in college right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're so. still doing college senior. Exactly. Yeah. So, And I'm that's not throwing them under the bus. That's basically, I guess, what you're supposed to do at that age. But mm -hmm. I just always had to mature pretty fast. Me and my brothers, like I said, my mom, she always installed in us, you know, faith and just... You got it. You can't live your life kind of just recklessly, really. Everybody's looking, so that's how I've always been. Yeah, and I mean, I know you have alluded to this a bit, but just for the listeners who maybe don't know, can you kind of explain, like, growing up mm -hmm. in it's Congo, correct? Yeah. Or um, just kind of explain what that was like, what you went through, what your mom, I know she ended up moving to the mm -hmm. U.S. and waited for you guys to come, yeah. so just tell that story if you can. Yeah, um, I was pretty young. Uh, I was born in Congo. I moved when I was five. Uh, so it was definitely, from what I remember, a transition, major transition, you know. I didn't, the funny thing is in Dallas, Dallas is so big, I thought that was the whole United States when I was oh. younger. So <laughs> Tex Texas, I should say, yeah. I thought that was the whole, you know, when I was real, real little. But, you know, as I got older, I was like, okay, this is, there's more states and stuff like that. But, yeah, my mom, she came over, she really came to the States for education purposes for us, me and my brothers. She wanted us, you know, get a better education and stuff like that. She wasn't even thinking basketball. She was just more so, y'all gonna come, get y'all degree, and, you know, just live a good life. But um, she ended up leaving, uh, a, we was away from her for like a year and a half, I believe. And then after that, it was tough. Uh, you know, I, I'm the one who always wanted to be around my mom. Uh, Steph was older, he was kind of like the father figure already, so like I said, that's where, and John Michael, uh, I think two years younger, so he was like 11. Mm -hmm. so, and that's your other brother? Yeah, that's my middle brother. So, um, like I said, we had to grow so fast, but it was just a, a different transition. Uh, you're not speaking any English, because our first language is French, so you're just going into a whole different world. And as I got older, I mean, I'm kind of skipping ahead, but as I got older, when I went to China, it was an easier transition because I've already done it, you yeah. know, because I've been it. out of that element. Exactly. Had, yeah. I had to come to, um, so that's why I was super comfortable going there, too. But, 
Yeah, um, mom, she, you know, worked a lot. She worked a lot. We really didn't get to spend time with her. As When I was younger, she wasn't coming to a lot of games. So she was always kind of the motivation for me to, you know, get her in a better situation and so she can see all of us grow how she intended for us to grow. Yeah. Okay, now go back for one second because you did skip ahead to China. Mm -hmm. What happened between being in Texas and China? Yeah, um, <laughs> I was blessed enough to be able to, you know, play basketball. So I grew up watching my brothers. They, Those are the people I always looked up to. So I grew up watching them. Um, Steph was pretty good. John was pretty good. Uh, they both had injuries. Uh, both had the same injury, actually. But so after that, I was just like, man, because I thought they was going to make it as well. Mm -hmm. So after that, I was like, you know, I got to just put, put myself to the side as far as just sacrifice and try to make it for everybody. That's kind of my mentality. That's what it was. So, um, like I said, I grew up there. Uh, I love Dallas. That's home. Uh, I have major love for it. I always go back during the summer and try to help out as much as I can. Like I said, you know. Cowboys fan? I am a Cowboys fan, but not, not, Ooh. surprising, surprisingly, surprisingly, I'm a dog. Get off the no. podcast. <laughs> I, who, who, who you like? Falcons? Falcons. What? Nah. nah. Did we beat y'all? No. Uh, no, okay. I'm just like, but Whoa. I'm, I'm really surprising. Let's calm down. Look, I like, I like the, um, the Cowboys, but my favorite team is actually the Dolphins, which is pretty weird. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because Ricky, um, Ricky Williams. Okay. Yeah, when he went to Texas. Big Ricky Williams yeah, fan. Yeah, when he went to I'm Texas. I'm hoping all of his business ventures yeah. take off. <laughs> so when, when he went to Texas, I'm a big, I was a big Longhorn fan. Like, I wanted to go there and everything. So uh, I love Texas Longhorns, so I used to watch them, and he used to always kill it. Then Vince Young came. Okay. So I used to watch them, so... I've always been Cole McCoy, all them, so I've been a fan. I can respect that. Yeah. I can respect you know. that, even though you should go, like, a couple states up to Georgia nah. and, like, like the Falcons. I don't I know nothing about Atlanta that. like that. You've know. been. I mean, like, besides playing the Hawks, like, have you been to Atlanta? Um, if it's not basketball, no. And So I probably, sad you're missing out on, like, the best I place. actually was talking about some. I was talking about Atlanta with somebody the other day, and I was like, I'm not a big fan of Atlanta. But you don't <laughs> even know. You've only gone to play I've the Hawks. Been, Sometimes you just get that vibe. <laughs> you just know? Yeah, sometimes you're like, ah, this just ain't for me. I think you would like it because if you're looking at the major cities, you know, I would yeah. say, what, Chicago, New York, L.A. I'd put Atlanta in there, Houston. Is Texas a major city? Well, wait, te Houston or? You, I mean, that's in Texas. Houston, yeah, yeah cool. I'd say Houston. Oh. But Atlanta is, I think, the most chill of the major cities. And if you're looking for a place like I don't. Chill, did you put Dallas in there? Dallas. I put Houston, but not Dallas. I don't know. I'm Houston's pretty... not chill. Houston's no, not but chill. I'm saying it's yeah, one yeah. of the major. No, I'm saying. I don't... Ooh. You can say LA, LA is it's crazy, but chill, too. It's... But it, it's crazy, though. I don't think Atlanta's crazy. But people go to Atlanta to have a good time, though. Yeah. So, I mean. I just, I'm really not can't. a fan of you not liking the place. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, to... <laughs> I'm just, but I'm being real with you. What I, what people, how people view it. You yeah. just, that's where you But found. I feel like you think that it's like the Migos. They're just running nah, around nah, nah. everywhere. <laughs> that's not, but it, people. And it is like that. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying it's not, but. It, pros and cons. Yeah. So, I. Uh, Maybe I gotta go see what you you're should. talking it's about. It's a great place. I've been, the food is all right though. All right. Yeah, nah, it's, I mean, it's the South. It's good. I read somewhere you love chicken. It's like if that, you love who chicken, doesn't love you should chicken. be in Georgia. Or the, Soul food. I mean, the South, period. But Georgia is like. Uh, yeah. I guess I'm the only person. To me, Georgia is like the Southern. You feel like that's the South? Yes. Right? Like that is where all Southern things. I, I can agree to that to an extent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was, just up? one day go, let me know what you think of it, and yeah. I think that you will have a complete... Different outlook. Yes, it's go to visit. But you did speak on something that I think is really interesting. So you speak French. Yes. And you speak fluent French. I speak fluent French, but at the same time, since I moved, since I was really, really young, it takes me... If I, I got to be speaking to somebody that speaks French. So I was going to say, are you and me, Frank and Nila Kina just speaking nah, French? Yeah, me, me and Frank speaking French. Okay. Yeah, so, and like... He'll talk to me in French, 
But if it's like I gotta think too fast, I'll respond in English though. Like I really okay. gotta sit there and think before I can respond in, in French. Really? Just but, because it wasn't something you were doing as much once you? Yeah, but my mom, she speaks French to me all the time. Like that's how, she always speaks so I don't forget. So she'll speak really? French. And it's funny because sometimes she'll speak English and I'm like, why are you speaking English to me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, you, you don't speak English to right. me. Right, so, go back. Yeah, so, yeah. and everything, so when she speaks to me like that, that's just how we communicate. So, okay, because I will hear Frank, like, speaking French to the French reporters that are always mm -hmm. there. Because now there's so many French reporters yeah, at the Garden. Yeah. And sometimes I'm just like, what are y'all saying? Yeah. This may be a good quote, and yeah, I don't know yeah, what y'all are talking yeah, about. Yeah. Like, it's just, but it sounds so pretty. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a very, very pretty language. Yeah, man, you can't. Can't talk to girls like that, man. Girls, they, <laughs> Can't use it, French? Yeah. They, <laughs> you think they, they'll they just fall crazy. in love? They go crazy over that, though. <laughs> it's the truth. Like hearing that other language, you're yeah. like, oh, that, that sounds nice. It, it's the truth. So you kind of got to keep that in the back. Is it? Oh, and the, it only comes yeah, out sometimes. Comes out I feel sometimes. you. You got to know You got to know your game. Yeah. I feel you. So is it easier? Like, for example, I've heard people say that English is the hardest language to learn because the rules are so, like, they're not consistent. Right. Like some words mm. are the same two like letters together, but yeah. you say it differently like than where, where, where. Right. right. Um, I think it's it's tough to learn, but for me it was pretty easy because I was young, so like I picked up words so so fast. So I go to school and I just hear it and I just pick up on it. But yeah. like somebody from my mom, so when she moved here, she was pretty she was older, so she graduated college and all that. And they teach you like English. I feel like they teach you English everywhere in in the world, mm -hmm. but it's just it's different when you in America. Like it's not, it's more so England like type of English that you learn. I feel mm -hmm. like so when you're in America, it's a lot different. Yeah. But for me, it was pretty easy picking like picking up because I was young and I just started first grade. Mm -hmm. So it was it was pretty easy. To learn. This probably seems like a really weird question, but are you good at math? No. Okay, because I've heard, like, I'm, don't worry, I'm not either. That's my worst. But I've heard people say that people who can speak more than one language also tend to be very good at math. No. Because no. I guess it's kind of how your brain that, that is doesn't not apply That's to you. That's not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a history guy, though. Really? Yeah, I like history. What but... is your era or place or time? What is your favorite? Mm, around Muhammad Ali's time. Like okay. When he was doing all the civil rights stuff. Yeah. That's more. That's where I really. That's my favorite athlete of all time. So. Cassius Clay. Yeah. 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 So that's any time, anything around that time. That's where I was. I really like figure out a lot about American history and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny. Like, do you feel like your view of American history may be different than others because of the lens you're looking at it through, like the people that mm -hmm. you're studying? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. Because I feel like, for example, you know, at school for me, it's like we're learning about American history through yeah. like, you know, Abraham Lincoln and right. like these presidents. But right. if you're wanting to learn about American history and you're looking at it through somebody like Muhammad Ali right. or Jim Brown, like yeah. you're seeing it from a different perspective than I would think the mass is. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of don't know how to follow it up with that, but I think it depends on like the individual that you're studying, mm -hmm. basically. So, or like Martin Luther King, him, Jim Brown, Muhammad Ali, they kind of gonna have the same type of story. Yeah. But you look at Abraham Lincoln or some of the presidents or whatever, it's gonna be different as well. Yeah. So I think it just depends on who that person is. No, for sure. And that's one thing I would say to my sister, it's like you're gonna, things will have a different story based on a different perspective. Exactly. So I think it's so important for people to wanna know about history right. and learn about different figures and why they did this. Like, I think in years people will view what happened with Colin Kaepernick a lot differently than they view it now, just because narratives continue to change as we go through time. But the reason why I look at history so much too is because it always repeats itself. True. So like, and a lot of people don't like to believe that, but it's, it's so true. It's just the timing is different. Like what's going, what's going on is different, but it's already happened. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it does make sense. Yeah, I think that's so really interesting. I think kind of seeing how they handled stuff back then and seeing it how it's handled now, it's kind of, Seeing how what was di what how they handled it differently basically is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So yeah, no, I read a yeah. quote once. It was like the biggest lesson of history is that men don't learn from history. Yeah, and right. that's very true. Basically. Yeah, it's very yeah. very true. But so this French speaking duo on the Knicks, which I'm gonna mm -hmm. like get like Rosetta Stone, <laughs> so that when I'm there, I'm like, okay, I know what they're talking about now. 
But it's funny and it's cool that you guys are able to be so close and have this relationship because when you came, the whole thing was like, what are we gonna do with Moutier and Mila Kina yeah. on one team? How yeah. is that gonna work? Mm -hmm. Did you feel that when you got here? Nah, I think that was more so the outside. Uh, as soon as I got here, me and Frank, we clicked. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, so, he's around my age too, so, and this is his rookie year. And I'm just two years removed from my rookie year. So everything he's experienced and what he's going through, I can kind of like tell him this is how I handle it or this is how somebody told me how to handle it. So, and I'm still learning. It's kind of helped me on kind of leadership yeah. type of thing. Leadership yeah. air quotes. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> so, and he's helping me without him knowing he's helping me, you know? So um, that's somebody that I, I see me and him like just growing together. Uh, and it doesn't hurt that you know we. Sp I think I think he can feel more closer to me just because we speak the same language already. He, he's coming here from France. You know he doesn't know nobody here. Uh, like he just told me his mom was here, but she left. So now he like you know mm -hmm. he's kind of on he's his like, own. He's like my friend. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I don't want to make him seem like I'm that, kidding. but he cool though, man. That's my guy. Yeah. Um, like I said, he's just trying to figure everything out and. He's kind of going through what I went through as far as transitioning to another country. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the funny thing is, he speaks real good English, though. Yeah. Like he he understands everything. Mm -hmm. His accent's not str like that strong as you would think. Mm -hmm. And he he's he's figuring it out. No, for sure, because that was the whole thing. It was you guys were going to be able to complement each other, mm -hmm. and then you were going to get the young guys playing and everything. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you guys are complementing one another? On yeah, I mean, it's still time? early too, but yeah. I feel like. It's funny though, because when you play sports, mm -hmm. just being cool off the court can get you to connect on the court. You know what I'm saying? If that yeah. makes sense. So like, me and him, just us talking French, like we said, we just feel like we can connect on the court as well. So it's it's actually helped too, like yeah. just communication level or something like that. So um, we're both just gonna keep working and try to get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, we've talked a lot about the reaction of when you were coming to New York and what a lot of the fans thought. And I think that, as I've said, it's really hard to watch you play basketball and not think that you just have this immense feeling. Like, I think right. anybody who watches you is like, he's talented, he's athletic, all of mm -hmm. these different things. But it's funny when you think about the different situations in basketball, maybe a different fan base may view you differently because mm -hmm. of what they viewed you and that team. Mm -hmm. And I just think, do you think that we as people sometimes give up on athletes too quickly? or kind of create a opinion on them before we have allowed them to show us what they can do. Yeah, I think um, that's one thing that my mom always talks to me about. One day somebody can say, oh, you're doing this great, you're doing this great. The next day they can switch up right on you. So uh, the main thing as athletes that you want to try to do though is be consistent. Uh, so if you're consistent, nobody really can you know say too much about you. You're gonna have some good games, you're gonna have some games where shots just aren't falling. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know what you're about, you know how to, you know, get over that. But at the same time, it's just about, with us athletes, it's about staying tunnel vision at the same time. You really can't worry about what's going on on the outside. But as fans, um, I would say you do got to stay patient as well. But, I mean, sometimes when you, you haven't won in a while, you know, you re you're ready for your team to win, you kind of just like, come on, we need you to do more. So I understand, like, I've been a fan of basketball as well. So mm -hmm. growing up, I used to look at some teams like, yo, why is this not going on? But yeah. when you're in it, it's a lot different. And it's also about just opportunity too. Like some places just in your might. your situation. In situation, yeah. exactly. Like some place just might not be for you. Mm -hmm. Like you can try, work as hard as you want to, do everything the right way, but that's just not where you need to be. So mm -hmm. you've seen so many players on one team, it's like, man, what's going on? They leave, they become an all-star. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, not, I'm just saying that in, in general, general though. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that's just how it is. Yeah, So yeah, yeah it's all about situations. Situation. People underestimate, like you being in the place that is gonna set right. you up for success mm -hmm. is, is a very a big part of Like basketball. a perfect example is, um, he's like my one of my biggest mentors is Chauncey Billups. Nice. Like, he, Bounced from team to team at a young age, got traded like his rookie year, like 55 games in, and he went on like three, four different teams, like through that for every year, like, and he finally landed in Detroit, and his career just solidified there in Detroit, champion and like you know finals MVP, 
Five Time All Star, like stuff like that was just happening for him. And mm -hmm. the stuff that was happening for him on other teams, saying people were saying, "Oh, he can't do this, he can't do that." He got to Detroit, he did everything that people say he couldn't do. So it was just sure. the right place and like right place for him over there. So what kind of like advice does Chauncey give you about that? What does he say to you that kind of sticks with you? Like I said, you got to stay tunnel vision. Yeah. Like, it, you got to believe within yourself. But the thing I, I believe that hurts athletes too uh, at a young age is that they get discouraged so fast. Like, yeah. And especially when you got everything, you was a McDonald's all, let's say you was McDonald's all American, you know, all that. Like, if you don't believe in yourself and know what you're capable of, I mean, and it's it's tough. Some people they'll read them comments, you know. They'll Social let, media has made yeah, it way worse. They'll let yeah. them, you know. I've heard some some crazy things, but I just laugh at it sometimes. You What's know? the craziest thing you heard about yourself? Man, people would say, "I hope you know you get in front of a bus and get ran," you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And, but to me, it's like, okay, whatever. You know, what I'm saying whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, you had a bad day. Yeah. But that don't that don't affect me. And then you know, like you said, you have some fans that really show their love and support. So, mm -hmm. and sometimes it be those same fans that saying, "Oh, you this, you that." Three years later, they're like, man, I was wrong. Yeah, you know, for sure. So in New York, for you, what is going to be like a successful New York tenure, tenure for you? What are you looking for in yourself while you're here? Um, just keep growing, um, keep getting better as a player for sure. Um, the goal right now, we're so young, but the first goal is you know trying to get some more wins, get to the playoffs. Um, you know, you know, if I'm blessed enough to be here long enough, just try to get a championship. So that's what everybody plays for. Uh, but like I said, man, I'm not gonna look too much into, and that's one thing I did in Denver too. I looked too much into, man, when is this gonna happen? When is this gonna happen? You know. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just got to stay the course and take it one day at a time. Yeah. And I think when you do that, it helps you a lot more. I I deal with that too. I've heard it called like destination addiction. Mm -hmm. Like I'm always thinking, okay what's next and how do I get there mm -hmm. and why am I still doing this right. if I'm trying to get to the next thing but yeah. I think that you almost hurt yourself if you keep yourself exactly. in that mindset well, sure. um, but before we get to Twitter questions I wanted to ask you about this because I just think it's so interesting talk about the decision to go to China and how yeah. you think that that kind of helped you Did you ever feel like you missed out by you know not having that experience just no nah, I kind of look at it as I mean not missed out I just feel like I came out of high school really because mm -hmm. I went I went professionally. I was getting paid for what I, you know, wanted to do. Uh, I mean, it wasn't about the money. The money was more so for my mom. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, I wanted my mom to be in a better situation. Um, she was working all the time, and uh, it presented itself. You know, God blessed me with the opportunity, and I talked to her about it. We talked about it, prayed about it, and I was just like, "That's the move to make." Because, like I said, coming out of high school. I was projected, you know, one of the players to come out one and done thing and do all that. So I was like, why not just go over there and play against grown men, kind of physically get ready. At the same time, my mom's in a good, you know, situation. She's living better and just grow from there. Yeah. So when I made the decision, it wasn't too, I mean, it was a difficult decision, but at the same time, it was like, I feel like this is the decision. I don't regret it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I stuck by it. I yeah. still stick by it. Yeah, as and, you should. And the funny thing is people always, now they keep thinking, man, I want to go overseas, but I'm scared to do it. And I wouldn't say it's for everybody. You know, you got to, your mind, your mentality got to be a lot more, like you got to be focused, like, because you're away from everything, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. You're away from everything, like that you're comfortable with. So. I mean, I do sometimes wonder, though, especially like with all the stuff that goes on with the NCAA now, mm -hmm. why kids who know they're going to go to college do one year and get to play basketball, rightfully so. Like, yeah. if you know that you want to be a basketball player, you know, right. why are you in school? Like, right. I, I'm a person who thinks, A, athletes should be paid, and B, the NCAA has almost created a culture that encourages mm -hmm. caring more about the sport than school, right. and you're almost doing a disservice by l making a kid go to school. Right. But I wonder why more people don't decide to take that route? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's on the individual, uh, whoever that is. Like, I, I'm seeing right now, the NCAA, it's stuff right now is crazy what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. But at the same time, people shouldn't have to, like, I feel like they're hiding that stuff. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you said, they, they shouldn't have to, to hide it. Like, 
if they're good enough, like you know they're good enough, just let them go. Uh, be one. I think players in college should get paid. Mm -hmm. um, so I think most people do, even if they don't admit it. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, because people they're just bit, like if your jersey's in there, you're not getting nothing for it. I feel like they should benefit off that too. So, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going. That's another whole different conversation. Yeah. But. And I'm not going to speak too much on it because I, I went around this. <laughs> I didn't do yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't go to college, so I can't really defend it too much because people, I can't relate to some of the stuff they're going through. Mm -hmm. So, But, yeah, I think, like you said, if you're good enough, I think they should just go ahead and let it happen. But at the same time, it's like it can also, you know, I don't want to say ruin a kid's chances, but let's say a lot of kids decide, oh, I'm, I think I'm good enough, and it doesn't happen. Yeah. You can't go back to college, you know, so you can't play in college no more. Mm -hmm. So they going to have to figure out what type of rule they're going to come up with. Yeah. So it's, it's, because I feel like a lot of kids at this, especially in this era, they're going to think, oh, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And you're not as ready as you think. For sure. Yeah, so. And I also think there's a fear, because I remember thinking this like about you going overseas it's right. like i would be like what if people forget about me right you know and that right. probably is such a dumb thing to think yeah. because scouts they nah, know it's, what's it's happening. not dumb it's not dumb it it's, it's not dumb but at the same time like you said if you're good enough they, they'll find you yeah you know what i'm saying like that i had scouts coming to my games and stuff like that but like i said if I didn't have my high school name and stuff like mm -hmm. that it would have been a lot like i would like, okay i gotta go to college yeah. you know so like but overseas, and it helped me in so many ways too. The, I mean, it, I had a great time over there. It, it was some times where I was like, man, did I do the right thing? But then it was sometimes like, nah, this is what I was supposed to do because I kept looking like my mom's is good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that was always like, all right, I'm not, I'm not tripping. Yeah. Yeah. And it has certainly worked out for you. It's yeah, I mean, it worked out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all right, good. Twitter question time. Let's see what we've got, Chia. You know, you got to shuffle through these. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> got to shuffle that's, through that's, the that's Twitter. What that's what I love. <laughs> I love some crazy stuff on there. Well, someone said, did you believe the Knicks were going to draft you in 2015, which you answered. Yeah, I did. How much of an influence did J. Mike and Stephon Marbury have on your game? Steph Marbury? Yeah. Was, oh, not you. But, oh, uh, yeah, I, your brother's yeah, name is Steph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, Stefan Marbury, he um he helped me out, you know, he uh he showed love. Um especially when we would play him, he would kinda give me advices and stuff like that. Kinda like trying to see how he does it. Uh, just tell me how the league is and you know, he, he helped me out in that aspect. Okay, very nice. I actually think he's like back right now. Cause one of our um anchors did a, a segment with him like oh, yesterday. Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's in New York. This was his last year playing too. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Hopefully you get in the Hall of Fame. What is the most challenging about being in the NBA, knowing you have no college experience and having to overcome obstacles overseas before entering the draft? Most challenging? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say in China, the thing that was challenging coming to the NBA in China that, you know, you, the coaching was kind of a little different because, you know, language barrier. Great. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a great coach, but you know, some things just didn't match up because I didn't understand what he was saying. So maybe the the coaching, you know, that I was getting didn't kind of. Well, I say nothing against them, but it kind of didn't translate to the coaching that I was kind of playing off of just pure talent up there. Yeah. You know. So, uh, but like I said, he was just trying to tell me as best as he could. You know, in English, like okay, this, that, this, that, like do this, do that, mm -hmm. and I. You know, some stuff, you, like basketball is your universal language, like yeah. you pick stuff up. But as far as like sitting down with you, like going through film and stuff like that, that was probably the the thing that was hard to translate because when I got here, I had to like kind of start that over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and probably different also just words that exactly. coaches use. Why did you choose your number or how did you choose your number? Zero or one because not. Yeah, I mean, that's what they're asking because they said... Yeah, let's see. I was just trying to shorten it. Yeah. They said, because why isn't he number zero, and why did he choose one? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it was for another, you know, another reason. I don't know. I just wanted a new number, but there is a reason behind one. Uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm a spiritual guy, so, I, like, nobody's, like, greater than, than Jesus, so that's mm -hmm. kind of why I wear it, and that's, like, my 
who I play for, you know, and stuff like that. Okay. So. I like that. Yeah. Okay, have you had any conversation with Kristaps Porzingis since he's been injured? Uh, yeah, I talked to him uh, when he, you know, he had his, because um, he got injured like three games before I got here. Mm hmm which that's dang, that's wild but um yeah <laughs> i wish i got i got a chance to play with him earlier but yeah we texted when he um he had his surgery and stuff like that I checked up on him i haven't seen him yet yeah because uh, i mean you know we've been gone he's laid up at the house so um, was that such a bummer for you like coming yeah, here man. and then it's like you're super happy still happy but it's like if he was playing, you know, it's like yeah, I sure. wish he was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's had, I mean, he had a great, he was having a great year, All Star year, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, we communicated. So we, we've talked a little bit, and I'm pretty sure, you know, we'll get to better. I mean, in which the funny thing was draft night, or draft like when you come to the lottery like hotel like you know we stay at the hotel funny thing is he was the uh room right next to me really yeah so Look at that's that. the, yeah that's the first Fate. time yeah that's the first time <laughs> i ever had a conversation with him very nice i asked i asked him i remember i was like where, where you want to get drafted at he was like new york i was like me too i was like all right so you know he got drafted here and like i said it's been it's been great for him mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. i mean he'll he'll come back stronger i'm pretty sure Good. Well, you were fantastic. You were yeah. very good. What, today? Yeah. I oh, appreciate the, it. Appreciate for it. For sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I know you weren't a huge fan of the media, so I yeah. was like, we don't know. <laughs> Don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> nah, it, I, it depends who I'm talking to. I got you. It hey, I feel you. I feel you. But no, yeah. you were great. I'm well, happy to have you in New York. You had a you. great game against the Warriors. Thank you. Wish y'all pulled that one out. Yeah, man, we got to start getting some more wins. Yes, so. for sure. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. And for welcome to New York. Me. Thank you.